So let's start with the audio sound bites demonstrating my cutting edge of societal evolutionness. I want to start with something I said yesterday on this program. And you who were listening will remember this. It was about Apple and their repatriation of $250 billion and their decision to spend another $350 billion investing in a new headquarters and hiring 20,000 workers. And this is the essence of my point yesterday. This is taking $250 billion that was not here and putting it in a giant syringe and injecting it here, plus Apple's other $350 billion. So here's over half a trillion dollars that is going to be invested in the United States of America. What do you think the impact of that is going to be on other businesses and corporations around the world when the United States becomes the place to invest? All of this is going to happen this year. We are on the cusp, potentially here, of an economic boom, the likes of which we haven't seen. Now we take you to Davos, which, by the way, do you know, you know what Davos is? Yeah, but, but who's there? It's the economic summit of who? Right. It's the globalists. It's, 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 it's the world's globalists. It's the world's wealthy. It's, it's the top 1% of the 1%. And the CEOs who work for them. And other slaves and people in indentured servitude to the 1%. They show up at Davos. It's a, it's a ski capital. It's always snowed in. Trump is going. And I just want to read to you, before I get to the second soundbite, which, hint, hint, it's Maria Bartiromov. The Associated Press, Trump to face mixed welcome at elite Davos guests. See, Trump is going, and this is going to be the equivalent of dropping a cherry bomb in the middle of things. Trump is going to show up and just totally blow the place up, because otherwise the whole thing would be organized against him. It would be... The establishment's most elite conspiring how they can pick up where the FBI and the DOJ and Hillary Clinton blew it and continue the process of getting rid of Trump. In the midst of this, Trump's going to show up and he's going to be bragging about America and he's going to be telling them the place to go is America, not Europe, not Australia, not South Africa, not Asia, not the Chai Coms, not Haiti, but America. And that's not what they want to hear. The crowd at Davos is treated every year, particularly during the Obama administration, is treated every year to tales and stories about how the United States is properly weakening and it's only fair for the rest of the world that this should happen. And the United States is ceding, C-E-D-I-N-G, ceding, losing control over the world's economy. This is only right for the rest of the world to be able to catch up. And Trump's going to go over there basically telling him, Guess what? We're back, and we're stronger, and we're going to be bigger than ever. And if you don't want to participate, it's your problem, not ours. But listen to this. In Davos, that's my, no, you're not Davos, Davos, like Milos Forman. It's not Milos, it's Milos, the nation. Madam Albright knows how to pronounce it. She had a crush on him. In Davos this week, participants, now who are we? We're talking about the elite 1%. The 1% of the 1%. In Davos this week, participants can experience a day in the life of a refugee. It's going to be kind of like you go to the Super Bowl, they have the NFL experience where you can put on a uniform and pretend to get your head creamed. You can put on the uniform, pretend to try to kick a field goal. At Davos, you can go there and experience a day in the life of a refugee, kind of like Martin Sheen kicking the homeless off of sewer grates in Washington 20 years ago. You see Warren Buffett or Bill Gates or the Saudi Prince Salman bin Salman, uh, Mohammed bin Salman, pretending to be refugees in Davos. Or you can hear about ways to uphold the Paris Climate Accord. Or you can learn how to promote free trade. Or you can rub elbows with any number of leaders from African countries. Those are the highlights. Of Davos. What a bunch of boring, dry ball bunch of people.
experience the life of a refugee is the big attraction at Dub. Anyway, you heard what I just said. Here's, nope, nope, see, I talked myself out of doing the right thing. I was going to play Maria Barcher. We just have to wait till after the break. It's coming right up.